I think we have some announcements to show you guys. Glad to have you here. Just a few announcements before we start into our worship service. If you need to rent a youth, see John Jowers for a spring cleanup job around your house or whatever else you need. Need to earn some money for camp. Young at Heart coming up on May the 5th at 12 o'clock here at Calvary. Come on down Thursday at noon for an amazing meal. Men's breakfast, how's that? May the 7th, that's Saturday morning, 8 a.m. So guys, come get filled up. As we say, body and soul, it's going to be a great time as well. We need a senior adult Sunday school teacher. If you'd like uh, to help teach or team teach with our senior adult class, we'd love for you to uh, talk with Gary Crutcher, our education chair, and see if you could be with one of our Sunday school teachers. We're looking for a while you're out project. One more time, and we need some help for you and some eyes to look around this community, see who needs some work done around their house, get back with me, and we'll see if we can put a project together. Youth sponsors needed. Still need some youth sponsors. If you're a couple, we'd love to go downstairs to help with our uh, teenagers. They'd love for you to come on down. Thank you very much. Welcome to worship. God bless. All right. Why don't you stand and greet one another? Every move I make, I'm making you. You make me move, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Every step I take, I take in you. You are my way, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Waves of mercy, waves of grace. Everywhere I look, I see your face. Your love has captured me. Oh my God, this love, how can it be? We're going to sing that again. Every move I make. Every move I make, I'm making you. You make me move, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Every step I take, I take in you. You are my way, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Waves of mercy, waves of grace. Everywhere I look, I see your face. Your love has captured me. Oh my God, this love, how can it be? How can it be? Yeah. Amen. Don't have a seat. Is it children's moment? Oh, well, let's go on to children's moment then. Children, come on down. I don't know what's going on this morning. Hey, good morning, everyone. All right, so how many of y'all have played that game called Would You Rather? I'm going to give you two choices, and y'all got to pick which one you want, okay? So would you rather go to Six Flags or Disney World? Now, if you want to go to Six Flags, stand right here, and if you want to go to Disney World, go over there. Some people don't know what to do. They're like, I don't know. So I guess, oh, okay, Six Flags wins. All right. All right, okay, here's another one. Okay, would you rather eat... Would you rather eat pizza forever or hamburgers?
some of them can't decide. They're like, ah, hey, both are good. Both are good. So, all right. And the very, very last one, okay? Would you rather sit down and do nothing or would you rather get up and move? If you want to get up and move, like go way over there. Get up and move all the way over there. So we got one just going to sit here. Cool. Yeah, I like sitting down too. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> See, some people just want to sit down and do nothing with their faith in Jesus. See, in the Bible it says, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Matthew twenty-eight nineteen. It says go. It says go, not sit there and do nothing. So we are called to get up and move for Jesus. So I'm going to go ahead and pray for you all real quick. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this chance to come together and worship as a, as a family and go grow closer to you, God. And I pray that these kids never stay sitting in their faith for you, God. I pray that they are always moving and constantly trying to grow deeper in a faith with you. In the name I pray. Amen. Amen. I also have candy if y'all want some. On? Yes. Hey. hey, welcome to Calvary Baptist Church. We'll get technology down in a minute. They got candy. They got some. Yeah, it's tough when you move. <laughs> there you go, Madden. Hey, it's good to have you here this morning. If you're visiting with us for the first time in our order of service that has welcome guests, we would love for you to fill that out, take it to our welcome center. We give you a special gift for worshiping with us this morning, just as a reminder that we are all here in the family of God. And one of the ways that we can become as a family of God, and that's through prayer. And we do invite you to pray. We invite you to pray every day, not just here on Sunday, but there's a lot going on here at Calvary. And don't forget tonight, another pancake fellowship after our worship. So you've got to get the spiritual food and then go get the physical food. But it's well worth it for our children's ministry. So let's be, make sure that we enter into a time of worship as, as the praise team gets ready to lead us in that through prayer. We invite you to come to the altar, to kneel, to stand, to join hands, to sit right where you're at, but reach out to somebody because we are here as the family of God. So let's go before the Lord right now in prayer. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand, sit, do whatever it is you need to do to worship this morning. Let this be our prayer that God would open our, the eyes of our heart and that we would listen to what he has to tell us. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see. To see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. You want to see him high? To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Power and love as we sing, holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Sing 
with your heart. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. holy. this morning church holy 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 you are holy 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 jesus holy 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 i want to see Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. I hope that's true this morning that you want to see him. That you want to see him glorified talk about that transformation that needs to happen in our life. A holiness, a holiness is what I long for. A holiness is what I need. A holiness, a holiness is what you Holiness is what I long for. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want from me. So take my
should be asking for. Brokenness, brokenness is what I long for. Brokenness is what I need. Brokenness, brokenness is what you want from me. With your heart, church. So take my heart and form it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, oh Lord. So take my heart. So take my. So take my heart and form it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, oh Lord. To yours, to yours, to yours, oh Lord. Oh 
impossible for you. Nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible for you. You hold my world in your hands, and I believe that you're my healer, and I believe that you are all I need. You believe is your portion this morning? And I believe that you're my portion. And I believe you're more than enough for me. Jesus, you're all I need. Sing, Jesus, you're all I need. Jesus, you're all I need. Just keep singing that with your heart. And Jesus, you're all I need. 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 Sing, I believe, and I believe that you're my healer, and I believe that you are all I need. Go and have a seat if you would. Do you ever cry out to the Lord? I don't mean simply asking the Lord to help you out. Or thanking Him for the food in front of you. I mean really crying out. Desperately in need of help. Falling on your face or on your knees. Lifting your hands and calling out to Him. Broken and unashamed. El Shaddai, which means God Almighty. Adonai, which is another Hebrew title for God. I mean, with tears flowing down your face, and tears flowing from your heart, seeking His wisdom and His help. Do you ever cry out to the Lord? Have you ever? Really? Or are you too prideful to kneel before the God or this universe. As we sing this song, I want you to listen to the words. And more importantly, I want you to listen to what God is trying to tell you and ask yourself the question, will you cry out to Him today? Father of life, seated on your throne of grace, it's only by your mercy we are saved. The Lord, you have said, if we call upon your name, we and our families will be saved. So we cry out your name. Hell should I, God of grace, the Lord most high, Jesus Christ. We rely on your grace, have a Failing to fall. 
forgive Each moment is a gift from you to live We're only here to tell the world about your grace Until the day you take us all away So we cry out your name, El Shaddai, God of grace, Lord most high, Jesus Christ. We to us whenever we do cry out. And I pray that that is impressed upon our heart this morning, Father, that we would just give up ourselves and fall at your feet. Father, that we would be humble enough to say, you know, we don't know everything. Father, that we would say, yeah, we're going to mess up. But Father, we need your help. So God, I pray that you speak through Steve this morning and help us to just listen to what you have to say to our hearts. All this I pray in your name. Amen.
can do to take that next step, to grow your relationship, to get closer to God. There are countless ways to move forward. You can start to serve, join a grow group, a Bible study. You can invite a friend to church, help someone start on their own journey. You can make your next move in one of a thousand different ways. But you can't be still. You can't be silent. It all starts with one step, and it ends with the promise of eternal life. Start big or start small, but it's time to step up. To not just join the movement, but to be the movement. Better yet, just move. Oh, some wise words right there. Don't just start a movement. It's time to be the movement. And I hope you understand, as we learned how to build last month, it's time to do something with that knowledge of building, and it's time to move. So I just need to know where we're at this morning. Welcome to Calvary Baptist Church, to our live stream family. It's good to have them clicking in. But how many of you here this morning have moved at least twice in your life? I don't mean this either. I mean moved. Okay, so we had a few. What about people who moved at least five times? Still hanging on. See coaches raising their hands still. What about ten times? You moved ten times. Dang, y'all know what it is to move, don't you? Coming from a military background, we know how to move. We know how to be minimalist. And so packing up, it seems like we never got unpacked. Just as the last picture got on the way, hey, time to move. Another base. Time to move. Got to go to another base. I'm like, golly, gee. You know, we never really had roots that went deep, and it was very shallow. And, but moving, and I want you to listen to that word and, and apply that word. There's three words I want to really emphasize this morning. Movers. Then there are mannequins. Then there are maybes. I met them all yesterday at a place called Lowe's because the entire world was there yesterday and me. I had a mission. My mission was to get 20 bags of red mulch. I was on top of the game. I parked out where nobody would bump my pickup, walked half a mile up to Lowe's. I thought, you know what? I'm not going to put them on the cart. I'm just going to go at the checkout counter, tell the lady, going to make those guys do it. I'll back it up. They'll put it in there, and off I go. I did just that. I walked up there in line. Can I help you? Yes, I need 20 bags of red mulch. Paid it. 20 bags, red mulch, south gate. She goes, okay, south gate right there. If you'll just pull up there. I'm like, oh, great, I'm a genius. I got my pickup. I pull up there, and there's a guy with the Lowe's vest on. He goes, can I help you? And I go, yes, sir, 20 bags of red mulch. She goes, oh, the one she just called in on? I go, yes, sir. He goes, literally, I'm walking. I have to do this. He goes, you're number five in line. Well, that's not what she told me. She told me, 20 bags, red mulch, Southgate, and I'm here, you're number five. Well, he didn't know who he was talking to. I was not a mannequin. I'm a mover. So I look down, there's that flatbed cart, and I go, is that being used? He goes, well, maybe. And I said, well, you let me know if maybe shows up. I got that cart. Kim wasn't with me, so I can be like this. I'm throwing bags of mulch on there like a machine, man. He's like. And I go, did you get that? That was 20. He goes, uh, yeah. I go, uh, uh, my pickup's here. I was moving, man. I, you telling me to wait. <laughs> 20, I rolled that cart back there, and I go, did maybe show up? No, sir. And I go, then I'm done. And I went, there's only four in line now. <laughs> I was not the pastor of Calvary Baptist Church yesterday. I was impatient Steve Carter yesterday. I was not going to be a... I'm not going to wait for five other people in front of me. i got to move. How many movers are there here? How many movers? How many mannequins? Okay. You just let me know when those five in front of me are gone and I'll, I'll move up in line. And then there are the maybes. Maybe this thing about God is real. Maybe if I see him move in the flesh, I'll believe. Maybe 
I'll buy into this thing called church. Well, that's where we're at today, church. We're on the move. We are on the move. And as much as some of us don't want to believe it, we, we have ma- missed the opportunity to move. Because there's a world out there moving. And we're watching it move by. We are not engaging. We are not grabbing. We are just, okay, darn, we missed them. Oh, well, maybe somebody else. We're standing still while the world is moving. There's just a simple truth I want to say this morning, and all of us here this morning are at a place in our lives. I know it's kind of elementary, because it goes back to no matter where you go, there you are. No matter where you're at today, maybe you're at that place right now today, you thought, man, I never thought I would be here. I never thought I'd be right here in my life. And maybe that's a good thing, maybe it's not a good thing. And maybe you think, I just wonder how I got here, I wonder how I can get out of here, The answer is M-O-V-E, move. We have got to become the living embodiment of the living word. When he tells us to go into all the world, he says go. He didn't say woe. He said go into all the world. And that's what we're up to do. That's what we're we're called to do. And and some of us, again, we have a plan. And I plan on being here the rest of my life. How many of y'all said that you've been here for your life? This is home. You ain't moving ever again. Some of y'all are kind of scared to raise your hand because you know what that means. Yeah. Yeah. Some are like, man, I'm good. I'm good. We're settled in. I got everything good. I'm, I'm good. And then all of a sudden, God steps in. I said, but I need you over here. You know, Timothy had good little children's moment. They needed to move over here, and they needed to move back. And some of them were kind of wishy-washy, and some just kind of, one of them just sat there like, I ain't moving. I'm good. Could be the mannequin right there. But some of us are all about moving. Coming up in a military family, we are all about moving. I mean, you never knew when the next move was going to come. You just had to be ready. And you had to be excited about moving. Some of us in the church aren't excited about moving. Last month, it was all about build. Build the kingdom of God is here within us. He built it for us to take it somewhere and build in somebody else. That's what it's about. We've got to start building the kingdom of God in other people's lives. Some of us are though. I I like it. I like it. It's good. Don't start rocking the boat. My house is not on wheels. It's supposed to stay here. I'm good. Don't, Steve, don't, don't don't you look at me and say move. Well, church, I'm doing, I'm looking at y'all. We need to move because right out the door is the mission field. And I say that to bring you to Matthew chapter 9 this morning. Matthew chapter 9, a couple of verses, but Jesus is talking here. You getting it? Jesus is talking and this is what he says. Then he, Jesus, said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, here it is, folks, if you've got a pen or if you've got a photographic memory, I want you to remember these three words. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out. If you want to abbreviate those three words, ask the Lord of the harvest to move, to move the workers into the harvest field. Anybody a farmer here? Anybody a farmer? I know at least a couple of them. A tenor, that would be you. Yeah, you think about that. I I bet you'd love to stand in your field when it's ready for harvest and go, harvest. And it's harvested. Mason, harvest. And it's done. I don't think it works that way. I think you have to move into the field and harvest. Am I correct? That's exactly what the scripture is telling us here. I don't know if you've ever had those epiphanies. I know it's a big word. Uh, I'll bring it back to jet.com and the purple head blowing off, okay? You get that picture? That's what happened to me when I read this in the context I'm trying to deliver it to you today. My head just kind of exploded when, when the scripture said, Steve, it's time for these workers to move. It's time to get going. It's time to saddle up. It's time to ride. And we are too satisfied in where we're at. I just want to sit here, Steve. I'm good. It's good. I I don't want to rock. Don't rock the boat, Steve. 
I, I don't want to rock the boat. I want to see if it'll tip over and pour everybody out. That's where we need to be. We need to be out of the boat, swimming for shore, and moving in people's lives. I don't know if you've ever been the recipient of one of those waves, and so you kind of wave back, and they weren't waving at you. They were waving at someone behind you, and they were kind of like coming towards you, and you're like, oh my gosh. Uh, uh, um. And finally, they're like, uh, move. Oh, hey, and they greet somebody behind you. You ever been there? Oh, I'm the only doofus here, huh? <laughs> I've done that. I'm like... Got that woody kind of, and they're like, excuse me, I'm like, oh, oh, okay, and they go behind me to somebody else. There's some times in our lives, folks, we've got to get people out of our way so we can move where God wants us to be. If there are mannequins in your lives, let me just tell you, church, it's okay to go, hey, how you doing? Okay, see ya, because I need to move, and I don't know about you, but this whole one word thing and this... This move thing has got me going. I might have to get me a Red Bull or something. Get me some energy up here. Because some of us are sitting very sedate, very sedentary, very sadly, where we've always sat. Well, I've been going to church for 587 years. What have you been doing? What have you been doing since you've been going to church? Well... I go. Great. What are you doing? What are you doing in church? Like that video. Start something. Move forward. Engage in a Bible study in a group. Go out and, and bake cookies and give them. But move. It's time that we literally stop, start picking up our feet and moving forward. And there's no doubt, there's some people, as I get older, are you with me? As I get older, my feet don't jump no more hardly. Anybody that morning person with, oh, man, God, God I, got, I know I got to get up, but it's, it's hard. When it used to be, oh, here we go, let's go, man, it's morning. Now it's like, uh, okay, feet, come on, swing off the bed. Come on, y'all are with me, I know you are. And then you kind of ease yourself up, kind of get focused, and here it goes like, Oh, oh God. And then you start moving. I hate to say it, but you're kind of wobbly. Ooh. I know you young folks don't have a clue, but just live long enough. You'll be there, right? And then all of a sudden, you just kind of get a little snap, and then things kind of start flowing, and blood's going, and you're going. And then at the end of the day, it's like, ooh. oh, Lord. That's how it seems like. But folks, let me tell you, when it comes to the kingdom of God moving, the only thing stopping the kingdom is us. Because if it lies within us, then the only thing stopping us from moving is us. And if there's those mannequins out there, if there's those people that are just, hey, move, man, I'm sorry, I see you. I've got to go. I've got to go and tell somebody because my life is short, just like yesterday. And this is kind of confessional. Help me. Okay. But it is. I just, I never dreamed there were five people in front of me. She didn't say, you're five. And I'm like, she just said, Southgate, 20 bags, red mulch. Yep. And I wasn't about to be a mannequin. I wasn't going to conform to four, three, two. I'm like, I got to move. Yeah, it doesn't help when you're an impatient person. It really doesn't. But I thought if God didn't want me to move, that flatbed cart wouldn't have been there. And if it hadn't have been there, then I couldn't have moved to the red mulch bin and got my bags of mulch. And there were people lining up like, are you going to load mine next? I'm like, nope. I'm on a move here. I loaded mine, pushed that cart back in there, and like, see ya. But church, why are we so willing to accept? Well, it's kind of windy out. We better not tell nobody about Jesus today. Oh, it's kind of cloudy. Oh, it's summertime and no one's home. And I tell you, when, when it comes time for the kingdom of God to move, there's nothing that can stop us. The harvest, as it says, is plentiful. But the workers, let me just translate, 
y'all are few. Are few. 300, almost 319 million people in the United States of America. 25% of them are unchurched. So approximately 59 million, 79 million people are unchurched. There needs to be a movement, folks. A movement of the word of God to these people. They don't just need, if you build it, they will come. You remember that? If you build it, they will come. Remember the movie, Field of Dreams, Kevin Cosner? Is I the only one who saw that? Okay. If you build it, they will come. What did he do? He built the baseball field in a cornfield. And, of course, Hollywood made it. They come. The baseball team showed up. But had a great message for the world, but not for the house of God. This physical structure will not get you into the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven within us, as we tell others, will get people to the kingdom of heaven. That's what we are here doing. We aren't here opening the doors, ringing that spiritual triangle. Y'all come on in now. They got that spiritual food ready. Come on down. It's us who are filling up on the spiritual food, getting ready to go and take it and feed others that are hungry for it. But some are not willing to move. Is it easy moving? The answer is no. It's hard to move. Packing your life up in boxes. Anybody see those little series now that's running rampant through the US? Tiny houses? Tiny houses. Go from like 3,000 square feet to 150. Now go ahead, ladies. Raise your hand. I didn't think so. Some of your shoes won't fit in that tiny house. But man, I tell you, there are so many things that clutter us and close us off to the world that we can't move. We've allowed so many things to get in our way that we're like, I I can't move. I just can't move. There's so many things there. So many things in the way. Well, then move those things out of the way. Maybe you're here this morning and, and you say you just can't move. Maybe this is your place. You're in the place of worries. You're so covered up in the place of worries that you just can't seem to put one foot in front of the other. And I I understand this. It's not easy living in a life of worries and wonderings. Chuck showed me a cartoon. Who was it, Chuck? Charlie Brown laying in bed. Have you ever had one of those nights? I'm going to paraphrase it. When you were thinking laying in bed and all of a sudden you didn't have anything to worry about. And then the next little blurb says, that kind of gets me worried. (laughs) Kind of gets me worried when there's nothing to worry about. So we have to think of something to worry about. So we can't move if we're worried about something. Maybe you're in the state of depression. That black blanket is pulled over you so tight you can't see one step in front of you so you don't move. Maybe you're just not going to move out of, the, out of sheer stubbornness. I ain't moving. Let me tell you, being raised in a military family, you know how to move. I don't know parent-wise here, if you've ever, if I have to come here into this room one more time, I'm going to make you move. You ever been there? Been the recipient of a forced move? Of a forced move. This is the force. I told you if I had to come. Yeah. My dad was like that. I was like, you make me come in here one more time. I'm going to make you move. Well, here we are in the story. I kind of led a long way up into Joshua. Joshua chapter 1 is where we're at this morning. Excuse me, this afternoon, Joshua 1, starting at verse 1. Let me just get right into it this morning. And this is what God is talking to Joshua about, okay? He says this, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid. So Moses has been, been, had an aid, Joshua, been with him a long time. God saying to Moses, excuse me, God saying to Joshua about Moses. Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you... And all these people, get ready to cross. Understand this, what he's saying. Get ready to move. Get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them. God's telling Joshua, tell them people, get ready to move. Cross the Jordan into the land I'm going to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place you set your foot. Basically, it's a land grab. Wherever you can travel, that's going to be yours. Now, let me tell you, folks, some of us to this moment would go, well, okay, here I go. 
Is that too much? Is, is that okay, Lord? Is that, is that enough? I'm, I'm moving. We're scared. We're scared to move. Every place you, you put your foot. Now, there's some of us. Then they say a land grab. We're like, you got that right. I'm taking this, and I'm coming over here, and wherever my foot's at, it's going to be mine. The Lord said it. I'm taking it. Folks, what has happened to the church when all we're doing is little baby steps when he says, if you'll move, I'll give it to you. That's what he's telling them. Every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses, it's going to be yours. Your territory will extend from the desert of Lebanon, from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, the Mediterranean Sea in the west. That's a whole lot of area. No one will be able to stand against you. All the days of your life, as I, as, excuse me, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous. I want you to remember that, those words because I said it two more times. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law your servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. So Joshua, order the officers of the people, okay? Go through the camp and tell the people, get your provisions ready. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land the Lord your God is giving you for your own. Man, I don't know about you, but that's one of those... <laughs> He's told this whole generation, get up. I'm going to give you three days to pack up, and then we're going to move. We're going to go across the Jordan River. Every place you set your foot's going to be yours. I wonder if you've claimed everything in the name of the Lord lately. You walked around your house, and wherever that foot lands, you went, Lord, this is mine in the name of Jesus Christ. You've kind of gone into your kid's bedroom, especially if you have teenagers. This would be a very important thing. And you claimed that bedroom for the Lord. This is... This is mine in the name of Jesus Christ. These kids have been given to me. They're mine in the name of Jesus Christ. And we a lot of times forget about claiming Jesus Christ. And we think it's all ours. But God said, Joshua, wherever you put your foot, it's going to be yours. Now for some, again, it's tough to move. It's tough to move that foot. Baby steps. Oh, little baby steps. I'm scared. I'm scared to move. I'm scared because I've never been there. And if I move there, I don't know what's going to go on there. And I think just this, church, I think we need to all be about giant steps. Giant steps because God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Be strong and courageous. Be very courageous. You will never go alone. And I think this is it. I think we need to take big, giant steps and move closer to Jesus Christ because understand this. I believe the devil is taking our marriages. I believe the devil's taking our children. I believe the devil's taking our schools. I believe the devil's taking our churches because we're afraid to move. We're afraid to get up. Oh, we love coming to church. Don't get my business, Steve. Don't you look at me when you say the word move. I ain't moving. Well, okay, but understand this. I am. And if you want to sit there and you want to watch this train pull out of that station, that's your choice, but the train's going to move. We're going to move. We're going to move closer to Christ. We're going to be doing things in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to claim wherever we put our step, it's, it's Jesus Christ's land that he's given us. We have got to move closer. And three times God said, be strong and courageous, because I believe one of the best tools the devil uses is the tool of fear. Oh, what has happened to the church? It is in the grip of fear. Well, we've never done that before. Well, that's going to take a lot of money, Steve. We, we can't do that. Oh, we're, we're good. we got money in the bank and we're debt free, so let's just, shh. Let's, let's make it to where nobody sees us. Oh, wouldn't the devil love that if we became silent church? Or what about secret church? 
We'll send out little emails to everybody and secretly meet with the lights out. Wouldn't the devil love that? Let's don't move. Let's, we're good where we're at. God told his people in the Old Testament, it's going to be time to move. I'm not going to bring that land to you. I'm bringing you to the land. If you'll do one thing, move. If you'll pick up that foot, and you're going to walk across that Jordan. It's going to be wet, but you can still walk across it. And everywhere you put your foot, it's yours. That's what we need to be doing. We need to be walking out these doors and into people's lives. We need to be bringing the kingdom of God that's within us to those who don't have the kingdom of God. And we don't need to wait till the crisis of God falls upon us. Oh God, where are you at? Oh God, this happened. Oh God, that. I better get to church. I better start praying. I better get the prayer warriors up. Better get on the prayer chain. Let me tell you, in this world you will have trouble. But Jesus said, take heart. I have overcome the world. He didn't say you're not going to have trouble. He said, I've overcome the world of trouble. And I'm not going to leave you in this trouble. I'm not going to leave you in the midst of this trouble. I'm going to be with you in the midst. And my rod is going to protect you. And my staff is going to draw you close to me. And you will be protected and covered as long as you are with me and I'm with you. Why aren't we moving? What are we so afraid of, church? Because nobody else has done that? Oh, oh, the words that were said when we went and fed those bikers last fall. Well, you know what's going to happen this time? We're going back. We're going back on a Saturday. And we're going to feed those folks who are hungry. For the scripture says, For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. And that's who the church needs to be. A church that's feeding the hungry, that's clothing the naked, that's visiting the ones in prison, that's sitting and listening. And let me tell you, folks, there's a lot of times, well, I don't know what to do, Steve. Have you ever heard the phrase, I mean, you, you want to get a Coke? Have a cup of coffee? Have you ever heard either one of those phrases? Just checking. It's one of the best icebreakers out there. Hey, you got a minute for a Coke? I'm going to stop by. Let's go get a Coke. Let's get a cup of coffee. And then all of a sudden, you start moving into somebody's life through a cup of coffee or a Coke, a plate of cookies. Maybe, maybe you just mowed your neighbor's yard just because it just needed mowing, and you moved into their life because you mowed their yard. Why does it have to be only on Sunday morning? Movers need to move every single day. We need to step it and claim it every single day. Then those, those mannequins, those mannequins, I ain't moving. I'm good. Okay, I'll respect that, and, and I'm going to see you later because I'm called to move. But then there, let me wrap up with the maybes. There are those with the maybe in their heart. Maybe, maybe this is legit. Maybe I'm going to try this out. Maybe I'm going to believe in this thing called church. Maybe I'm going to join a Sunday school group. Or maybe I'm going to go to a women's conference. Or maybe I'm going to just talk to my neighbor who's going to church and say, Hey, what, what's going on in your church? And that's when we get to move into their life. Or we can be mannequins. We can just be stiff and not engage in anybody's life at all. I'm wondering which one are you? Maybe this morning as, as we seek and, and have that invitation, the praise team comes and the music fires up. Maybe this will be the first time in your life and that stirring in your spirit goes, I need to move. But let me tell you, there's a demon out there that wants to bind you up, chain you down and beat you down because, well, don't do that. You don't need to move. You're good. You're good. Everything's good. You don't think the devil wants you to prosper? He does. He wants you to become so busy and so involved in everything else that you can't move closer to Christ. Summertime, just around the corner. School, just about out. Oh, so much going on. There's so much to do. We've got so many things on the calendar. I don't know if I can move closer to Christ. Now, let me just wait till fall. Let me see if maybe fall, when everything kind of slows down, does everything really slow down in fall? No. No. I say it's time to move now, church. God was speaking to Joshua. Every place you put your foot's yours, but you've got to move. And some of us, this is what we think moving is. Okay, I'm good. I'm good right here. God's saying, all oh, that's yours. If you'll just move to it. So I just leave you with a simple question this morning. As God told Joshua to move, I pray that you will join me in this movement towards a world that is dying without Christ. 
And maybe this morning it's you who need to take the step to move closer to him. Maybe this morning it's, it's your opportunity to move into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Maybe this morning somebody has, has moved in your life and you want to repay that movement by moving into somebody else's life. Maybe this morning as you stand up and you're going to say, oh man, he's almost done. We can get out of here. It's been on my heart. It's really been burdening me. Let's go move this afternoon. Let's move into somebody's life this afternoon. Let's sit down and do something crazy like call or write somebody. Let's do something even wilder. Let's go knock on our friend's door and tell them, hey, if nothing else, I just want to let you know you're loved. I just wanted you to know you're loved. Because there's a world of hate out there telling us every day how much we're hated. Why don't we tell somebody that they're loved? I leave you with the challenge, folks. I challenge you to look and see who you are. Are you a mover, a mannequin, or a maybe? But it's going to be evident with every step you take. Would you stand with me, please? Father, we come before you in your house. We actually moved in here for a little while. And now it's time to pack up and move out. And God, there are some of us that just kind of walk out past that spiritual time clock and punch it that we came. It's good that people are here, but Father, it's time to go into the mission field. And God, I pray for your people. That they will get a passion to move. Not to become mannequins. Not just to sit and say, I showed up but to stand up and to move out. There are just blocks right around this church right now that don't know Jesus Christ. There are people in restaurants and grocery stores right now. Father, it's up to us who have the kingdom of God within to move into their lives. So Father, the aisles are open and I'm going to be at the side if anybody needs me, Father, but I want to get out of the way and let you move. Move in the hearts and the souls of people's lives right here this morning, God spark within them a flame that will be an eternal flame that you'll write their name down in your book spark within them a passion to move closer from a husband to wife and wife to husband and parents to children that we become a body of believers who seek to move out in this community and and change our world so god speak to us now move within us we ask in your name amen This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship you.
the ushers come forward, you move right with them. You come right now. Ushers, come on down. sending your son to die on the cross for all of our sins and father i pray that as we leave here today that uh, we go out into a world that says that we should take care of ourselves only and look for look look to take care of our families and not to worry about anything else that we go from here and as steve has challenged us that we move and that we reach out to others and we extend a hand to them and that we we show a loving god and a merciful god and that that we we be witnesses for your word and for your greatness and for your mercy. And Father, I, I just pray that uh, we will be witnesses for you and that we'll be brave and we'll be bold and we'll be courageous. And Father, as we take this offering, I p pray that we bless it and that we bless the gift and the giver. In your great name I pray. Amen. Yeah. Go ahead and stand and grab a hand. Let's sing on out of here. Let every move that you make be for Jesus today and for the rest of the week. Let's sing that every move I make. Every move I make, I'm making you. You make me move, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Every step I take, I take in you. You are my way, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Have a great day. Ways of mercy, ways of grace. Everywhere I look, I see your face. Your love has captured me. Oh my God, this love, how can